Oh my gosh, what do I have here? This actually feels good. Let's go. <laughs> yes, sir. Smashed it. Two bigs. That's not good. Currently troubleshooting. Uh, let me get to the bank safely here. I think our plans are ruined before we even get started. Something is really acting up. Ooh, what's going on, y'all? Good morning, 7.15 a.m. From the creek today, we're gonna be fishing some new micro cranks by Guggen Squad in the creek. We're also probably gonna talk about just creek fishing in general. Not that I do a ton of it, but how you need to finesse down. We're probably gonna do some things like along with those micro cranks, throw some Ned rigs, maybe some smaller finesse jigs, uh, smaller micro sized swim baits, and see if we can catch some stuff out of a spot we have never dropped in the boat before but there's a ramp at this uh, local spot this is like in the Dallas area there's a popular park nearby and there's a boat ramp right off the main road to this creek it looks a little sketchy the water despite like flash flood warnings this entire week looks almost low for this creek which is interesting right you could understand why I think that Ooh, ramp looks a little on level looks very steep let me take a look at this thing right here is this doable whoa Hold on, hold on, hold on. This ramp is like a vertical. I think our plans are ruined before we even get started. This isn't a ramp. It's hard for y'all to get a visual of how steep this is, but it's cracked and broken. I'm trying to hold the camera level so you get somewhat of an idea of how steep it is. But we're gonna have to go somewhere else, y'all. I had such big plans for today. This is not cool. We were gonna work this creek, goes down and opens up into some ponds. We we're gonna take the bass boat in a tiny creek today and I don't think it's gonna fly. We're gonna have to make a change of plans last second. This is literally the end of the ramp right here. I don't wanna slip and drop the camera, but that could definitely happen. The end of the ramp. The boys are gonna be upset. I'm gonna have to get their reaction right now. They're literally putting ice in the cooler. And uh, I'm gonna have to tell them that like, we're gonna have to come back here on the kayaks. Come check it out. It's looking pretty steep, boys. It just fell completely straight off. Oh my God. Look how it cuts off right there. It literally just, it, that's the end of the ramp, dude. Oh, this is kayak access only. Damn. Luckily, really? we know of a place somewhere nearby. <laughs> we're fishing off the hot tamale. The boys literally were so gracious. They stopped at the gas station and loaded up drinks and ice for the cooler. We cannot not utilize the boat. So this really sucks, but that's we're going to have to make a move. That's one of those uh, scenes where your truck goes in, in the water. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want that. No, no, like, the tamale just goes boom, the here comes the truck. Would, the trailer would buckle off. And, like, oh yeah, the trailer fall. would just flat yeah. bottom, there'd be no way. You took electronics out here? Yes, I've taken electronics out here. Like straight up in the center, it gets to about 40 feet deep and even like deeper further down. So it's pretty sketchy. Someone did back the street. I mean, that's definitely like probably the size of a little kayak trailer. Let us figure out the game plan, y'all. We might just end up hit fishing a big lake. I have no clue. All right, so uh, there's actually a very similar spot right up the road. It's like a little bridge area, and uh, I think it would probably be a pretty good idea if we send it over there. Hey, it's got a ramp that works. I'm down. You didn't tell me we had to hop a curb to get in here. <laughs> little surprise. Dude, this is like epic, though. Yeah, it's legit, right? This is insane, and cool. there's a boat ramp yeah. right here. What on earth? Yeah, Ryan, want to go park across the street because he'll take out his front end. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan's in the car. He couldn't hop the curb. I had no idea we were like going off road for this, but this is dope. Not the usual place you would spy a bass boat for sure. Let's load up. So mellow that I'm gonna have to back the truck up like extremely far. So the only concern is like the boat going far back and hitting one of these columns. So I'll probably have one of y'all drop me in that way I can handle the boat while y'all park the truck and trailer. I'm just gonna get it close to the ramp. on earth. Turn this on and see how deep we are. We might be in like inches of water. Let's go man, time to fish. Time to not hit these columns. Holy uh, shit, yeah. like inches off these things. Yep. Let me turn this motor up. <laughs> Why is it not going? Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh, trolling motor ain't going. For real though. Foot pedal is legitimately not working as we drift towards this column. We're gonna have to figure that out. Hey, will you uh, will you not let us hit that, Jimmy? I'm gonna turn the boat on. Currently troubleshooting. 
Yeah, hey, watch the motor if you would, yeah. All right, we're in like three feet. Let me get the, let me get to the bank safely here. Okay, so when I like press the go button, it's not going. But when I press this right here, it'll, it'll go. Like it'll stay on constantly. Woo! So, something is really acting up with the trolling motor. I'm literally, I'm pressing the gas right now and it's not doing anything. I need some troubleshooting tips because that's not good. Slowly, slowly. Put it in reverse, Terry. Come on in, Put it in reverse. Come on in, bud. Quick moves, quick Let's moves. Let's go. Wait in the back, wait in the back. Yeah. All them happy feet. Well, the big motor's working, but the trolling motor's not, so Sorry. this could be real fun. Got your uh, carp a little dirty. You're good, you're good. Turning off the power, turning it back on. We're just trying to, I only turned off the trolling motor power a moment ago. Do y'all realize this whole video is going haywire? What's yeah. going on? Yeah, seriously. We have big plans for today. We're gonna fish the creek, easy money, nothing to it. Started at the boat ramp. <sighs> okay, power's off, power's back on, the main and the trolling batteries. Just charged her up last night. Hot tamale was working fantastically last time we took her out, and pretty much every time for that. So let's see. I kind of have a feeling it's not gonna work again, but I'm, I've been wrong before. So, bumping it up. She ain't working. But then I press this button and it goes. I got it. Ta-da! <laughs> Let's see if the plan works. All right, so I'm gonna bump it down a little bit. That way we don't jar ourselves. I'm gonna turn it to the left. It's working. Prop. We're good. I'm just gonna be on the remote today, boys. I don't know what's going on with the trolling motor, but we done figured out the solution right here, and it's called 360s at the current moment. <laughs> Let's hit this grass edge right here. I was just on live scope before I turned the power off, and you can kind of see some grass at the surface. Let me turn the trolling motor off. You can kind of see some grass on the surface, and it looked like there was a little bit of a ledge coming off the bottom of it, and so with that, I saw some fish hanging out along it. We're gonna cast right here just for a moment, see if we can catch some stuff. We might go hit the banks. I'm, it's very murky. I'm thinking top water, spinner bait, uh, something that stands out, something that pops. We're gonna fish some of those micro cranks as well. Try and get on some bites for you guys pretty quick here. Let's go. All right, y'all, so Jimmy and Ryan are covering an intro for their video. I'm gonna start things off with what I have rigged up, which is a Ned rig. And I'm gonna throw it for just a handful of minutes on the edge of this grass. I've been seeing some action. Uh, and then I'm gonna switch straight over to probably something like one of those micro recons or micro clutches and uh, fish some cranks over here. And I'm throwing that on the BFS Corrado. This is like 10 pound fluoro, Guggen Squat Twitch rod, and those Finesca Mexus handles. So everything is gonna be linked in the description. Dropping down the Sakoshi. All right, y'all, so I'm thinking the shad color. Check out all the micros we've got. I'm, I'm debating on whether to throw the recon, which is a two to four foot diver, and I think what I'm gonna go with, or the clutch, because we're going through some grass, but I really just wanna kinda crank and reel cover water, and the square bill on this one is gonna allow me to do that a little bit faster. I think this is gonna kick. I assume that working this grass line is gonna be the move, but yeah, I'm kinda curious why it's not working. Usually it's like the simplest fix. Like I know somebody's gonna drop a comment and they're gonna be like, oh, you just do this. I just tied on the hound. We're seeing fish breach the surface and hit stuff on top water. So this has got a little noise to it. Darker color should stand out. See if we can get a hit. It's still early. Yeah, y'all can work slow off the front and I'll just kinda cast along the back with, the, with this thing. Cause I, since I got the remote, we good. All right, well, they're definitely hitting the surface, but I don't know if they're gonna go for a top water. I've cast it a handful of times. Let me try the crank. Breaking out the micro cranks, that Ned Rig versus the uh, micro recon right here for size comparison. I mean, these things are tiny, and I am quite confident that any fish in here will bite this shad pattern. So whether it's a bass or not, hopefully we can get a bite on this thing. There's that range, man. That's pretty dope. <laughs> They're like shooting at us too. The wall is right here, the concrete wall. <laughs> Slow to start, y'all, but Ryan just had his first bite. He's throwing a ribbon tail worm. I think it's like a purple exo ribbon. And candy red blue flake. Nice color to stand out in this clarity. Since it's this shallow, I'm gonna switch the view because we haven't been like deeper than 10 feet at all anywhere, right? Yeah. So I'll put it into the... Things got more settings than an Xbox. Yeah, it's... it's... Uh, sometimes too much. Perspective. So now uh, we're gonna go off the graph, the side graph. Now what's gonna happen is instead of only looking right in front of the trolling motor, it's gonna be looking left to right. 
And since we're in shallow water, you're gonna see fish cruising through here. See that? Yeah, that's a fish. I don't know if that's. I see that's, that's like a bass, fish. probably. That's there's a good sized fish. It. Yep. A big shadow yep. behind it. Yep. Yep. It's not a gar though. The gars are like you can tell a gar. There's your bait. Something's chasing it. See? Perspective mode is pretty pretty ridiculous. <laughs> this is insane. Yep. So if you want to change the sensitivity, you you hit this plus or minus, okay? Because it's it looks fairly sensitive right now. So I'm gonna bump it down a little bit. See, you can now the now the targets, the fish really stand out. If it gets deeper, you're gonna fish, see less detail. The tail. Yep, there's your bait again. So if it gets deeper and you don't see as much detail, just kind of bump that up a little bit, the okay. sensitivity. That's so sick. So that's just yep. a front, like. That's, it's, it's looking, right yeah, so now, that's a good question. Now it's not just in front, it's actually wherever the trolling motor's looking is, is straight. So you're looking left and you're looking right. So it's perfect for oh, shallow water. So like right now, we're seeing, if I were to face it this way, see there's some fish, room, there's a fish right here. Dude, there's a fish right here between us and the bank. Two feet of water, look at that. Yeah. Good sized fish too. Maybe a carp, maybe a bass, but the shape didn't look like a gar, so. Look, right, right in front of us, front of right in front of us. That's that thing's gar. huge, that's, gotta be a that's gar. huge. It could be a gar, but dude, I'm telling you, normally they look like a pencil. Yeah. Normally they do look a little different, so that's a big gar, if it is. So I'm able to see what those guys are seeing up front. I've just got it on the same deal. See, there's a fish right in front of us, right in front of where the trolling motor's looking. He's about to pass through. Oh, you got about five feet in front. Yep, I just changed the sensitivity a little bit so I could see a little bit better. But yeah, I'm looking at the same thing y'all are seeing. There's like no depth to this place. I'm hoping we can find somewhere that's like 10 to 12 feet and maybe we'll find them isolated in that dip as it starts to heat up and we can like toss some, you know, Texas rigs, drop shots, things of that nature and really target them. But for now, we're just roaming the shallows. Look at that fish right in front, dude. That's probably a guard, dude. That stuff is on the move. So crazy. Yeah, those are still valuable for sure. Yeah. All right, y'all, that was kind of a little bit of a bust, but it's okay. I had low expectations, really wanted to fish the creek, and we have more coming your way. Now we're going to go to a spot where we know we can catch some fish, so let's load the boat up, uh, and I think we're going to hit the banks for a minute. All the lakes are just so washed out. We've had tons of rain this week. I think I mentioned the like flash flood warnings we've been getting. This is chocolate milk when I think there's probably normally some better clarity, but if we go hit some ponds, I'm confident we can get on some fish for you guys today and showcase some of these techniques and baits we wanted to use in the creeks as well as on this lake, but uh, now we're going to have to do it on foot. Start trimming it down by pressing this, just like slow and steady, a little bit more, good. And really crank it, crank it, crank it, maybe one more, maybe one more click, yep, good. Alright y'all, we just made a decent little move across town. Uh, you may or may not recognize this location. Based on the bite earlier, who knows what will happen. I do actually see somebody hanging out in the shade on the bank. I don't know if they're casting a line in or not. The boys are rolling up. They parked in a separate lot from where I did, but I wanted to kind of be able to keep eyes on the boat, so I parked right across from the spot. And uh, all their rods are on the boat deck, so uh, it looks like they're <laughs> coming over here right now. Completely had no expectations on catching fish at that creek, by the way, this morning. I really wanted to showcase the area, and of course, we weren't even able to fish it, so then we moved to the bridge spot that Jimmy and Ryan have been fishing lately. Not getting on too many bites, but just kind of like a scenic little area, something new. Switch things up in the videos for you guys, and now we are hitting another spot that is going to make its channel debut today let's go ahead and get the rods off the deck and start a cranking all right y'all and because we've never fished this and we are in the urban environment chances of getting kicked out historically speaking on the Weston Smith channel is like 95 96 <laughs> percent so so I'm going one rod and reel and we're just gonna be ready for anything let me grab the bank box real quick otherwise known as the kayak box it's got general tackle in here so one rod one reel in it oh wow it's very shallow this Okeechobee crawl is pretty visible Wonder if I should change the color to something more natural. Definitely just saw some bait fish cruising in the shallows here. This could be a good spot. Let me just kind of cast straight out deep here. You know, the bass are gonna be well aware that the bait fish are hanging out in this cover. And so when they choose to come feed, they can probably just skirt right on up here from the depth straight out. So maybe some of these bass congregate right off of this stuff. Oh, Ryan just caught one and I just got broke off simultaneously. Dude, that was almost a double up. So close yet so far. Now I have the opportunity since I broke off. It's like, hmm, do I want to use anything else or do I want to just keep throwing a Texas rig? Of course, I just got that bite, but like, you know, 
Yeah, we'll just break out another T-Rig. I believe this is the sprayed lettuce right here, my fave. Alrighty then, switching it up from the creature to the crawl. We're rigged, let's get right back in there. Oh, Ryan's on again. Oh, I got one too, got one too. Oh, oh my gosh, what do I have here? This actually feels good. Yo, this actually feels like a good fish. Oh my gosh, whoa, 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 a mega, a freaking mega. Oh my gosh, that might be a five. Bro, That might be a five. Is that what ate my bandito book? Look at the one Ryan Oh my gosh. Dude, this thing smashed it. What? Smashed it. What? Two bigs. What on earth? I thought it was a rock. I thought maybe this was a like a, a gar or a catfish. Bro. I didn't know what to think. Dude. Insane. Bro. Let's go. Let's get it. I just got broke off, dude. There might be a bigger one over there. Jimmy, hit that. Scale zeroed out. Let's see what this thing goes for. That's a big mouth, man. This is a this is a healthy fish, too. They're eating good. Five, four, six, dude. But y'all can't fish big water though. <laughs> but y'all can't catch them at the lakes. <laughs> All right, y'all, fresh off the scale. Holy cow, at five and a half. First time ever fishing this pond. Ryan's right behind me with his almost four pounder. We just caught, wow. So sometimes you break out the boat, nothing goes your way, and then you're rewarded with something like a nice five and a half as soon as you try some new waters. What a show we just put on for you guys. Thank you so much. Let's get this thing back in the water, y'all. That was insane, dude. I, I was like wondering if my drag was not tight and I didn't even want to like take the time to try and adjust it. I was just trying to hold that rod. I lost all consciousness for a split second. Fish all day with nothing. I'd like to uh, give a major shout out to Guggen Baits and the Crack and Crawl. Sprayed lettuce has hands down been the color of the year. If you guys don't have any sprayed lettuce, I don't care if it's bandito bows, Crack and Crawls, whatever your favorite plastic is from the boys, go ahead, GuggenSquad.com right now now get you about 10 packs you're not going to want to stop fishing these things you will get bit i like to pair it up with a quarter ounce tungsten weight for general all-purpose type of stuff heavier if i'm going deeper or, or working through some thick cover but a uh, quarter ounce is great for the ponds and i pair it up with a four ot guggen squad hammer hook we've just had so many catches on this combo right here this year so and that's throwing straight braid which is not necessarily typical right a lot of people are going to tell you you need a leader I'm here to tell you that the fish are going to bite when they're hungry and don't be afraid to throw some straight braid and some decent clarity water because uh, you see what can happen. And if I'm not mistaken, this pond actually gets pretty heavily fished. I mean, it's not an unpopular area. So with that being said, let's try and get some more fish on the bank. Oh my gosh, Kate. Ah, fooled you. <laughs> yeah. Skirt. Nice top of the mouth hook set despite the sideways hook set and not going vertical with the rod tip That's one thing a lot of folks like to do with the t-rigs is they like to set the hook up It kind of depends on what you're fishing If you're like just flipping then it's best to set the hook off to the side because if that weight comes up It'll hit you in the face on occasion So it's best to it's safest to set the hook to the side But if you're fishing cover like the trees and stuff and you're just trying to get them out of that stuff So they can't bury you in it and you lose that fish it's smart to set the hook up for one because usually the hook is going to penetrate the, uh, the top of the lip and the top of that mouth is a little bit rougher and it's harder for them to come off but not only that you're also kind of working them up out of the cover immediately so depending on what you're fishing might dictate how you're going to set that rod and so for me that time it was just kind of a dink and we got lucky there she kept the cracking so i guess we're going back into the bag okay y'all i don't think i have any more sprayed lettuce cracking craws but i have some sprayed lettuce bandito bugs and you know I ain't switching after that five and a half. So let me go ahead and put this thing in the water. I'm gonna cast right back where I caught him, right along that little wall there. I'm just letting it fall, letting it fall. Boom, it just hit the bottom. I felt it hit the bottom. That's when I'm gonna start working it nice and slow with a couple little pops. That creature's just hopping around on its fall back down to the bottom. It's kind of fluttering. They've been hitting it pretty good on the drop. We've been just kind of keying in on features that look good and stand out to us, like the rock the trees you know something that's a little bit different than just that wall and the bank by itself and we've been getting pretty lucky at landing right on their face they're right where they should be so let it fall boom just hit the bottom i felt it got a little slack in the line for a second so i just tighten that up that way if you get a bite you can feel it if you have slack in your line and you get bit you're not even gonna know there's a fish on there right so you got to keep that line tight with the texas rig you're working it with the rod you're not reeling you're not really reeling it in you could you could swim this bandito bug and you'll still get bit but the idea is to let it fall to the bottom. There it is. I got a little slack in my line, tighten it up, 
Now I'm just gonna pop a couple times and I'm gonna reel in the slack as I lower the rod tip. And I'm just working the bait back with the rod. So Texas rig tips, if you're unfamiliar with the rig, it is one of the best ways to fish around cover. The hook is text posed in the plastic, meaning you're not gonna get caught on a lot of stuff. But when you go to set the hook, you're gonna penetrate the lip and you're gonna catch those fish. So let's make a little move. We've been hitting the spot for a minute. We got our bites. Let's see, let's see what we got. Maybe they're hanging out out deep as well. By the way, that was now the biggest fish ever caught on our new Scorpion DC. This is the 2021 year model. This has been the reel that has gotten more attention than any reel I think we've ever purchased. Like more of y'all have bought this reel because you've seen it in our videos than any other reel. So if you wanna pick this thing up, it's bad to the bone. Not many people have it because you can only get it imported. I'll include an Amazon link. It's trustable, it's reliable. Uh, many, like I say, many of our uh, subscribers have bought this reel from that link. And I believe it's probably the best price you're gonna find and ready to go right off the bat. So if you guys are interested in the 2021 Scorpion DC, get you something not a lot of people have with a sick like gunmetal black and red color scheme. I mean, not a lot compares to how sick this thing looks it's got 150 spool size so it's a good all-around spool size you can get great casting distance have tons of line left and also you can do stuff like flipping and pitching because you're not you know rocking a 300 size spool something crazy like that this is just an excellent reel we absolutely love the entire scorpion line we've got the mgl we've got the previous version scorpion dc and this is probably our new favorite reel so check the link in the description if you're interested in the scorpion and i think that covers everything from head to toe as we explained squad.com is where you grab everything else we're using oh there we go all right no skunks out here today in dfw all the boys have linked up this is epic Ready? peace or is this like sinking sand i don't know that's why i don't like we found an island. There's bait fish off of it. No way. Yes, yeah, sir. You got a good one? Yeah. Jimmy says he's got a good one. Oh, he's way over there, dude. You got. Oh my gosh. Dude, off the island. <laughs> Catching fish off the private urban islands, y'all. <laughs> what on earth? <laughs> oh, yep. 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 Double up on the island. Double up on the island. Oh my gosh. Don't let him go. Oh, he's fighting, boys. He's fighting. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yes. Wilson. Yes, sir. Peace. Oh, he's, he's coming back. He's coming back. Ryan's on his way. He heard we got supplies over on the island. It seems he's out of hooks and weights. Hey, the island shall provide, man. We could do a catch, clean, and cook on this thing. That'd be pretty legit. Bring out the grill. How's it going? Good, good, thank you. Getting on them today, the bite's hot. What's going on, y'all? Not too much. Man, we've I think we're at six or seven total now. It's been good. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we're all about it. We have some fun at the ponds. There's some good fish in here, by the way. Yeah, there's some decent ones around here. Uh, he's pretty dang big. That's a good one. That's a good one. He's pretty big. That's bigger than a five, baby. Like, I'm just catching five. You got it for me? Let's go. Come on, baby. Quit effing around. That one's a little skinnier than the last one. Yeah, I think we got him pretty good. Let me get them pliers. No, no, the hook's right here. Oh, you got it? This dude's torn up. He's looking like a humpback, too. Summer bod. Look at it. Nice and skinny. A little lethargic, not eating much. It was hungry for the crack and crawl, though. Sprayed lettuce, baby. All right, y'all. Let's get her back in the water. We'll see you next time, kid. <laughs> I knew this spot was going to be okay. Yeah. I didn't know it was going to be the best damn spot close to us. <laughs> <laughs> this is right? insane. What is even happening? Do y'all have an event going on tonight? Is there anyone playing? Got it. All right, well, the island paid off, y'all. Wrapping up what turned out to be an excellent day of fishing. After a long grind, waking up early to get out, take the boat, big production, and then you end up hitting the banks and catching some bigs. How was the experience, gentlemen? It was epic, man. <laughs> Besides the heat being out here, it was pretty damn sweet. Even this morning, it didn't like show up to be too good, but as far as like location-wise, just being out here, dude, it's awesome. Gotta love yeah. it, gotta love it. I think it's I think and not it's, to mention what five pound fish and twice pounds, yeah and then a double up Dude. yeah but I think it's always the best when you just like say full send go somewhere new and it pays off 100% could not agree more 10 pounds of fish for my top two today 
absolutely insane. Once again, all the gears linked in the description. Unfortunately, I can't save you guys any money on the Scorpion. Absolutely worth it. Whether you're thinking about getting into your first high quality reel and going with the Shimano and wanting something that's just a little bit different and totally sick, grab it. Or you're just looking to add that new next best reel to your arsenal for 2021 and the future. This thing is going to be cranking big fish for years to come for us. We hope. And if not, we're going to have to order some more. I think this is probably my new favorite reel and we caught some big fish on it today pond hopping with the boys absolute blast y'all drop a like on this one and we'll catch you on the next one peace